So welcome to all, greetings to wherever you are, wherever you're joining us from, whether that's good day or good evening or good night, welcome to you all. My name is Daniel and I will be your chairperson for tonight's open access guest presentation on SNUI, the online spiritualist community. Uh, as I've said, this event will be recorded. It will be edited before it's uploaded to YouTube. And do know that if you want to remain anonymous, you are welcome to allow yourself to stay with the video turned off if that is more comfortable for you. Our presenter for tonight uh, for this workshop is Ms. Lynn Parker. And she's an officiant with the Spiritualist National Union, as well as a course organizer and tutor at the Arthur Finley College. Uh, we're very, very happy and very grateful to have some of your time, Ms. Lynn, and have you with us and presenting to us about your knowledge and how we can better ourselves. So we very much appreciate your willingness and ability to be here. I'd like to welcome you here and um, open the floor for you to present us with all of your grateful knowledge um, and bless us with your time. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the very warm welcome uh, as well. Um, it is lovely to be invited to deliver this workshop this evening. Um, so it is going to be a practical session. And, um, but to begin with, I'm going to um, do a short talk for you. And then we're going to go on to hopefully go into the breakout rooms for you to do some work in twos. So at that point, I will need to see all of you and when you go into the breakout rooms as well for you to have your cameras on. So we might need to sort out what happens with the recording then, um, Daniel, as well. So good evening, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, as Daniel said. So I'm here the, this evening in the UK to um, facilitate this workshop. And it's called, as you've realized, psychic or medium, but the emphasis on the workshop is look just exploring just for this 90 minutes, um, the idea of how we present ourselves and how we work within private settings, within one-to-one -one sessions. So I just really, I'm not sure how this is gonna work, Daniel, but I needed just to see some hands put up actually. So maybe if we could, I don't know if we can go off spotlight for a moment. So if we're thinking about whether we're working psychically or whether we're working with the spirit world, often there can be a lot of confusion about whether it's your imagination, whether it's you working psychically or intuitively with someone, or whether it's actually the spirit world coming forwards and making their presence felt. And so as we start on this journey of discovery, this journey of mediumship, there can be a lot of questions and a lot of doubt. And we know that word confidence is, is quite a, a, even though it's quite a short word, it's quite a big word when we're thinking about our development, our progress within our mediumship and our awareness of energy, because that's what we do with our mediumship. We explore energy but it has much more significance than that. And we have to start somewhere. We have to start with this awareness of whether it's our mind, whether it's the energy of someone who is alive. And we, when we work psychically, sometimes we would use the word intuitively, we work with the energy of someone who is alive, somebody who is in the physical body. And that person can be in the same room as you, or they can be on the other side of the world, of course. And we know that energy follows focus. So through the idea of intention, through the idea of preparing our own energy, and through thought, we can blend with the energy or become aware of the energy of someone else in the physical body. And so the more that we can practice working with that sensitivity to understand how we can become aware of their energy, those skills that we develop and those abilities that we become aware of will then help us when we go on to work with the energy of the spirit world. 
I tend to call them, and my mind works in quite a simplistic way, and I tend to call them transferable skills, if you like, because the mediumship, I believe, is a lot of it is about training the mind, training our minds to learn about the mechanics, learn about the process of an understanding and monitoring the energy, whether we're working then psychically or we're working with the spirit world. And once you start to be able to recognize the difference between each, that's when then you start to be able to understand the, the mechanics more, understand your connection more with that energy. And so we encourage you as part of your training, part of your development to develop the psychic aspect of your sensitivity. So that generally is a starting point, isn't it, within training and within development, that we learn to broaden our thinking, widen our thinking, be shown using tools the potential that we have to explore energy, to explore information. And the interesting thing is that when we are asking you to develop your sensitivity, encouraging you as tutors, then generally we, we get you to use all kinds of different tools. And that word tools is used quite a lot as well. If you notice that language is, can be quite confusing within the development of mediumship, can't it? Sometimes we have several words for one thing. You know, for example, if we're working with the spirit world, if we're working with other people's loved ones, first phrase, if we're working with communicators, if we're working with contacts, we have these different words for the same thing. When we talk about tools within developing the psychic faculty, we can use things such as oracle cards, we can th use things such as color, so objects, symbols, all kinds of different tools as a platform, as a starting point. And that helps to develop confidence, but it also encourages, if you like that lateral thinking, interpreting information, which of course is what we do when we then become aware of those individuals in the spirit world who want to communicate with us as mediums to pass on the information to people here. Then of course, the only tool that we use is our mind, mind to mind communication with other people's family and friends in the spirit world. But when we're encouraging you to develop the psychic faculty, that sensitivity, we, we encourage you to use all kinds of different tools. Now, in the physical world, that's so much easier, of course, if you're going to your classes and your courses, your seminars, because we can hand out these cards or we can hand out objects or whatever it is we're working with. And we're man well, I'm managing to get round it to a certain extent in Zoom. I'm trying to adapt as best I can exercises um, that we would normally do in the physical world to be able to do them in the Zoom world. And it's very interesting um, being able to do that. So we, we develop this sensitivity, we develop this awareness of energy using these different tools as a platform, as a starting point. But you've probably recognized as part of your training and your development that those tools are a starting point. So when you're asked to do an exercise in a training group or training class, you use that tool to help you find the words, to help you express what you are sensing or you're feeling from that individual, that person that you're working with. But often when we start using the tools in an exercise, then as we use them, our mind moves away from the actual physical tool, the physical card or the physical object, because we're then concentrating more on that connection with the aura, with the energy of someone else. So I would say to those of you that maybe have, have used tools, have used those objects or whatever it is as a starting point, don't hang on to, keep going back to them if you're using them in a psychic exercise, if that makes sense. Because it's natural that you then move your awareness, your attention away from them because you're focusing on that connection with the other individual that you're working with. So as I said, 
a platform, a starting point. Now, if we think about moving forwards with all of this and you practicing your exercises, you understanding about the need to set the intention, to build the power, to reach out, to blend with other people, whether it's here or whether it's in the spirit world. That idea of um, that starting point, that progression then moves into, okay, well, what am I gonna do with all of this? What's the importance of it? And of course, we recognize then the importance as part of our journey to have different experiences. So we can stay working with the psychic aspect, the psychic faculty is what we call it. And we can continue on practicing, working more with cards, with objects, whatever it is. And we can then take that very brave step, if that's where we're going, if that's what we want to do, of thinking, okay, well, where am I gonna go with all of this? Shall I start, you know, maybe reading some cards for somebody else? You know, that can be that first step, can't it? Um, I've, I've been practicing, I've been reading them for myself, and now I'm going to think about reading them for other people. And again, that is personal choice, whether people do that or not. But it's interesting because generally, I'm generalizing here at the Arthur Finley College, we don't teach people to go away and do psychic readings for people. We generally use it as part of the training and the development of the awareness of that energy. And so, People do, of course, as part of everyday life, do psychic intuitive readings for people. They do card readings, they do color readings, they do orograph readings um, for people, or a camera readings, all of which are psychic, psychic um, readings. So it's where we're going to take all of this. So we can, as I said, use it to help develop your sensitivity in that training environment we can take it out there and we can work in a more maybe a more public way with it again be mindful um, of the responsibility of course with all of that and so there are many different ways we can deliver sittings we can deliver readings for people so we have that psychic the intuitive reading the intuitive sitting for someone and within their energy, of course, if we're working with that intention in mind, the aura contains colours as well as information. So again, the colours within the aura are quite a useful way of working with someone. And so the aura also, of course, contains information. And so if that's the intention, we can talk about someone's past, where someone is up to now within their life and within the aura also is contained not only information about the person but information about all aspects of their life their thoughts are reflected within the aura their experiences are reflected within the aura and so we can with intention and practice blend with the energy of someone that is, who is alive, and we can talk about their life story. So moving forwards with that, of course, originally to begin with, it's about training the mind to work with lots of different kinds of information. Again, being mindful of the responsibility. But as we move forwards, again, we might want to think about um, how we're going to put that into practice, how we're going to use it for members of the public, for people out there as well. And so that's not for everyone, because remember mediumship and awareness is all about unfoldment, unfoldment of self to begin with, unfoldment of self. And I believe that mediumship sometimes then is a natural product of that awareness of the soul within you. And so, there is so much else that runs alongside this. So there is the intuitive, there is the psychic aspect. And there is, of course, the mediumship, the evidential communication, where as mediums, we train ourselves to change our awareness, change the vibration of our energy to become aware of the energy of other people's loved ones in the spirit world. 
And so it is through that training, we get to understand our connection with that energy of people's loved ones, people's family, people's friends, people known to those left behind when the medium is working. And so the evidential sitting is something that we can learn to work with, learn to explore, to experiment um, with, of how we can get a better connection, how we can find more and more kinds of information, but also have depth to what we're doing, have quality to our mediumship. Moving from those, if you like, those spontaneous moments where the spirit world reaches out to us, moving more then into it being a more controlled, um, better structured way of building the power, becoming aware of the information from those in the spirit world, and then having the confidence, of course, and the courage to pass it on to someone else. All aspects of mediumship are about healing. However you look at it, that it's all about healing. And I believe if we're looking at the psychic faculty, the psychic aspect, that huge responsibility we have, we can still have that responsibility of it being a positive experience for someone. So we are not predicting the future when we are talking about the psychic reading, the psychic message. We are maybe talking about someone's hopes, their dreams, their wishes. We're maybe talking about or touching on the past to show them how far they've come now. So it is a very much about encouragement, about helping to focus, helping to uplift someone. And so when I was first came into all of this 20 odd years ago, the word psychic was very much a dirty word. It was a word that wasn't sort of used or it wasn't um, worked with in the environment I came from, um, the spiritualist churches. And so I learned my mediumship backwards, if you like. I was fortunate enough to have a natural ability um, with my mediumship. Um, and so I'd never heard of what working psychically meant at all. It was something that was completely alien to me. Um, and it was only over time when people kept using this word psychic, which was sharp intake of breath when it was mentioned within my spiritualist church, which you don't work psychically. I started to realize then that the natural ability that I had was enhanced or it was hopefully made better by understanding more about the psychic faculty. So the psychic aspect does have value. It does have a purpose if it's used in a responsible way. Because remember, you all are responsible for every single word that comes out of your mouth, every single word. And so when you have explored working it, doing a psychic reading for someone, or you've worked with one of their loved ones or family members or friends in the spirit world, people should feel better afterwards because this is about healing. This is about positivity. And so it is important that we recognize and that you recognize, and I'm sure you do, that responsibility that you have with words. So we have the psychic reading, the intuitive reading. We have then the evidential sitting, which is about, as I said, working and understanding and exploring our connection with other people's loved ones in the spirit world. So that we are able to gather an amount of information, an amount of evidence, so that what we say to that person left behind means that they can identify their loved one in the spirit world. They recognize who it is. And so, again, you probably all know the purpose of that. Again, it's about healing. It is about healing, trying to show there's life after physical death. And so the purpose, if you like, for the psychic reading is different from the purpose of the mediumistic reading. But it's all about energy. It's all about intention. It's all about blending. But a different purpose different intention in mind for each. I don't know if any of you have heard of um, a spiritual assessment or a spiritual appraisal, sometimes they're called. 
I can only see a little few heads across the top of the screen. So I don't know if you want to nod or yes, I've seen Ada, she's doing a thumbs up. Wonderful. Thank you, Ada. Um, yes, a spiritual assessment or a spiritual appraisal is a different kind of sitting that we can do for someone. And a spiritual assessment, again, tutors, mediums will do them in different ways. Um, they are in essence a psychic reading, an intuitive reading for someone because you are working with the aura of your sitter, of your client. But it's a, if you like, a more specialized kind of reading because the focus or the emphasis is on that person's spiritual journey, their spiritual pathway, and also their mediumship. So remember, if you do a spiritual assessment for someone, Remember, there are many, many ways of working with the spirit world, many ways. Everyone's pathway is different. Everyone's pathway is unique. So it is not everyone's journey that they're going to end up doing um, demonstrations to thousands of people all over the world. Who knows? They might. It's not necessarily their journey, their pathway that they're going to end up doing private sittings. Um, for members of the public. There's a lot of emphasis, a lot of focus on what that end goal should be when people start out on their journey of mediumship. An awful lot of, of pressure, if you like. It's all, kind of in a way, if you like, assumed that, that people are going to go out there and do private sittings um, for others. Have you noticed that, any of you? Or it's kind of assumed that the end goal is going to be demonstrating. Yeah, that, that it is, isn't it? And to be honest, 25 years ago, when I started going to my spiritualist church, it was assumed then that if you went to any kind of training, it was because you were going to be a platform medium, you're going to all work a, a gallery medium. Um, and to me, that's OK, if that is if that is how it ends up being or that's your focus, that's fine. But you will miss out an awful lot on that journey because there are many, many ways of working with the spirit world. It isn't necessarily doing what I'm doing. It isn't necessarily doing what you're doing. Everybody has something to offer. And I believe that the journey of mediumship begins far so far before you start to go to training classes, you start to go on training courses. And I'm not just talking here or maybe about spontaneous experiences you've had, um, you know, as part of your life, or even since a child, or I'm not even talking about maybe something happening in your life that made you open up your mind to mediumship and to the idea of life after physical death. I'm talking about the way that you live your life. So your mediumship, if you like, your sensitivity, your connection to that power has begun far beyond structured training I don't know if you agree with that because through your life experiences through learning empathy compassion which are so important as part of your development and, and you know working with exploring your sensitivity so mediumship I again I only speak from my personal you know experience my personal opinion but I believe it started far far further, much further back than from that training when it first starts and you start out on that journey and so yes we, we move into the realms of the more structured kind of training but by living your life by being a kind person by being a compassionate person by helping others by volunteering in a charity shop or working in a hospice or being a good neighbor to someone these are all ways of working with the spirit world. And so don't think as part of your journey that the end goal has to be working publicly with your mediumship, doing private sittings for people. It might be, but, you know, enjoy what comes up, what is offered, what comes across your pathway as part of your journey. And that, that is so, so important to remember this. So we talk about these different sittings. We talk about the psychic aspect. We talk about the mediumship. But there's far more to it than that. 
And so in a spiritual assessment, as the medium, as the person who is, who is doing this, we need to explore the spiritual pathway, not just the mediumship, if that makes sense. So that's why it, can, it, it needs to look at the, the soul energy as well of the person that we are speaking to. So a spiritual assessment might talk about the past to the journey into mediumship. It might look at what's been happening in that person's training or development over the last few years or more recently. Looking at the blending, the connection that that individual has with the spirit world now. What is limiting them? And again, just another thing of mine, if you like, is that we often get asked, well, we get asked lots of questions by lots of different students with lots of different levels of experience, backgrounds, and all questions um, are, are valuable, all questions are important. But often we get asked, um, what's blocking me at the moment? I'm blocked. That word blocked is used quite a lot within people's perception of their development, of their mediumship. I'm feeling blocked. I always take out that word blocked as, somebody, as soon as somebody asks me that question. Because by saying the word blocked, you're putting that thought into your mind, aren't you? Yeah, I'm blocked. So it's telling yourself you are stuck, if you like. You can't move forwards. Now that word blocked, it's people's perception, isn't it, of how they're feeling, how they're maybe struggling with their mediumship, how they're feeling challenged with it, maybe. But I like to use the word, it's a hesitation. You're not blocked, it's a hesitation. It's a moment in time, maybe for you to learn or absorb or reflect on what you've been learning. It may also be that you have to focus on your material life for the time being. It's a hesitation. The only blocks we put are on ourselves within our own minds. And believe you me, we're very good at that, aren't we? Yeah, those doubts, those questions, those, is it me? Is it the spirit world? If I say this, is it going to be taken the right way? You know, dare I say this? You know, these are very, very understandable and very common thoughts that people have. So maybe as part of your journey, as part of your uh, increasing awareness of what mediumship involves, because we start out, don't we, in quite a naive kind of way with it, thinking, I just want to find out more about working with the spirit world. I just want to help people, which is wonderful. It really is wonderful. And then we kind of start to learn about the mechanics. We learn about working psychically. We learn about working with the spirit world. And we think, oh gosh, this is hard enough. This is difficult enough. My mind interfering, me, me not be understanding fully what this word power means. Whose power is it? Is it my power? Is it somebody else's power? Is it the power of the spirit world? Am I in the power, out of the power? Yeah, it's all part of the, the thinking and the process that takes place. And so that's challenging enough. But when we move forwards with all of this and we do take that plunge maybe to reach out and you know, maybe work with members of the public, offer different kinds of, of readings of sittings for people. And that is when you really learn how you work. Yeah, so it's all very well in theory, having those challenges that you always are ready for, believe it or not, when you have those difficulties in your training classes, in your groups, where it doesn't go quite so well. That's because you're ready for that challenge, believe it or not. Tell yourself that, honestly, tell yourself that, yeah, that you're ready for it, that you need to learn how to work with the no or with, learn with, to work with the distraction. And you're in a supported environment because the other students are there to support you, hopefully. And that is one of my rules when I'm, I'm teaching on courses, that we set that grand rule that people are there to support each other. But when you're out there offering these sittings to people, 
offering these different things to people, that's when you really start to have to dig deep sometimes. Learning about how to deal with people, how to answer questions when they ask you um, some of the, uh, the, the questions maybe about how mediumship works, you know? Um, and so you have to learn to think on your feet to a certain extent. We can't know everything. We really can't know everything. But we can give our own opinion, our own interpretation to try and, if you like, sow a seed into other people's minds. We can't tell people what to think or what not to think. In psychic readings, in evidential communication, in spiritual assessments, we can't tell people what to do. We really can't. That is not our role. We have a responsibility. So sometimes it's about clarity. Sometimes it's about confirmation. Sometimes it's encouragement. We're working psychically, or maybe if we're doing a spiritual assessment for someone. You know, it just gives them, if you like, that little nudge to move forwards with their life, move forwards with their journey. And of course, if we're working with an evidential communication that is very much about those healing words that come from the spirit world, that give that reassurance to those left behind. So spiritual appraisal has value. Um, again, different tutors, as I said already, have different uh, ways of doing these. Sometimes um, a tutor will start to talk or a medium will start to talk about the colours within the aura of their, their sitter, their recipient. Sometimes they will just start to talk about their, the person's spiritual journey. We might touch on their everyday life because that can have affected where they're up to with their mediumship or what's been affecting their mediumship. And we can look, as I said, at the blending. And it's, it's the, again, depending on how the medium does the uh, assessment, we can maybe then look also at the possibilities, the potential of where their journey might take them for the future. So really that's the only kind of sitting that we do where we look at potential possibilities and you'll be mindful that I'm using the words potential possibilities I also tend to use the word opportunities because again the people that we are speaking to have choice yeah and you know their life journey can change your life journey can change we know that and so that's why I believe it is about the encouragement that we're giving them you know, so we can talk, talk about their hopes, their dreams, their wishes with their mediumship. We can also talk about what they feel is bringing that hesitation to their development. And so it is very much about trying to help them move forwards with this. And in a spiritual assessment, a spiritual appraisal, again, not all mediums will do this. Some do. If it's, if it's appropriate and if it's right at the time, then one of the, the guides or helpers, one of the spirit team of the sitter, of the recipient, um, might also come forwards within that. So it can be, depending on, on how it's done, a combination of the psychic faculty, the psychic aspect, and one of the team of helpers coming forwards. But again, there's a need to be honest with that. This is me talking about you. This is someone from the spirit world coming forwards which leads quite nicely into me looking at how you can use the psychic aspect, the mediumship aspect in sittings, in private sessions with people. So depending on what you were to offer, if you're reaching out there to, to um, members of the public, or again, you just wanna practice more, you might want to just offer, for example, um, a colour reading to someone. People like you to talk about their colours. And it's a really nice tool when you want to try and build your confidence with your private readings, private sittings with people to begin in a, in a psychic and intuitive reading to talk about their colours. It settles you into it. It settles your listener 
your recipient into it and it, it kind of just it just creates a nice harmony between you and them and then of course you can move into however else you're going to work as part of of exploring that if we're talking with an evidential communication of course the intention will be we'll become aware of one of our our sitters family or friends in the spirit world and we'll start to bring forward that information evidence to try and show that person left behind that their loved one lives on now i believe that as long as you are honest then it's okay to say to your sitter is it okay if i just begin by talking a little bit about you yeah this is my personal opinion that you can, it's okay as long as you're honest. So you can say, you might want to talk just about the, maybe the colors within that aura. And then, okay, we'll see then who from the spirit world is coming forwards. And then you would stop and say, now I'm aware of somebody from the spirit world. So I believe that you can combine the two, if it's appropriate, as long as you are honest. But sometimes you find what happens is as soon as you've said that to your your sitter, somebody from the spirit world's there already, you know, um, because it takes the pressure off the medium by directing thought in, in a different way. It gives the spirit world the opportunity to come in. Um, and so it's a very nice way of, of just meeting that balance, as I said, so you can combine the two. And sitters, you know, they have different expectations. Yeah, um, I do, um, well, I do a, a talk and I'm also in, we're in the process of putting together a, a course where um, we look at the sitting and the sitter. Um, and the, because the sitter does play, not just because it's them you're speaking to, but they play um, a big part in how a sitting moves forwards how a sitting progresses even though we're saying to them it's just yes no we're not sure when we're speaking to them a sitter naturally very naturally has expectations so it could be that they think that they would like um, uh, um, maybe they'd like an assessment but actually the need from the spirit world is that they hear from their son or their daughter or their friend but they're thinking that they need to have an assessment they need to know about their mediumship and we have to be respectful of course so if you're offering different kinds of sittings to people different kinds of sessions be clear about what the purpose is with each what each is does that make sense to you yeah, be clear. And so we also have to be respectful and mindful of the needs of the spirit world too, you know, because they aren't going to tell somebody that they're going to, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example there. They're not going to tell the person here what to do. They might express an opinion, of course, but they're not going to tell the person what to do. So if someone comes to you, a sitter comes to you thinking, that you are going to tell them what to do in their life, then you need to make it clear as the medium that you're not going to tell them what to do, nor is the spirit world. They might express an opinion, but it is your life choices. Yeah, it is your choices in life that, um, that, that they are yours. They are not to be made by those in the spirit world. And so you have to be clear if you're moving into these realms. So meeting the need of the sitter is important. Getting the sitter on side before you even start to work is important. But also meeting the needs of those in the spirit world too. Because we are not going to put words into the mouth of other people's loved ones if actually we are bringing forward that, that psychic information. We are working psychically and we've not realised yeah, so it's important that you as part of your development know the difference, understand the purpose of each, understand and be very 
as much as you can be, I suppose, be quite secure within your mediumship if you are thinking of putting yourself out there to do private sittings for members of the public. Because there is this tendency, again, you're thinking about the, the goal, the thing that's going to be achieved, of thinking, okay, I'm going to go on a week's course. At the end of the week's course, I'm going to give up my material work and I'm going to do private sittings for public. Okay, that's their choice, isn't it? That is their choice. But they may or may not, may not be able to achieve that. You know, this we're talking time, putting in time, putting in practice, having patience, learning your skills, learning your craft, if you like. So this doesn't happen overnight. You might understand the mechanics after a week long course. You might understand the process, but putting it into practice and learning about your own development, your own progression of your own soul. You know, that is the starting point, understanding the power within you and then starting maybe to think about your mediumship. So as part of your journey, be very secure, or as I said, as secure as you can be in your mediumship before, before you put yourself out there. Because, you know, it, it is a joyous world doing sittings for people you know, evidential communications for people. It brings joy. It can, has the potential to change people's lives through the healing that it brings. And that is a huge responsibility as the medium. So understand the responsibilities. Understand the need to work on yourself. Be clear about how you, your relationship, if you like, with the spirit world because you need to build up your own relationship with your team and that understanding of the energy that you're working with. So be secure within all of this before you start to put yourself out there. You know, understand how to explain to a sitter what the, all this is about, what you're offering as well. Yeah, there's so much more than just learning about the intention, the power, the blending so much more to it so you know never stop learning never stop on this journey so you know there is that saying that many people use um that um all mediums are psychic but not all psychics are mediums but i think it reaches far more than that that all mediums are human beings too and as part of that, we have to sometimes learn when we need to just take that time to work on ourselves. That that hesitation within your development is for a reason. Yeah, it's whether you listen or not and whether you're prepared to explore why you, that, that moment in time or you're being held in that moment in time within your development too. So yes, explore the psychic faculty work with your mediumship but also explore the need of your soul too you know it's not just about the mechanics the message that we bring is far more than the mechanics yeah so remember that but any questions before we go on to do your exercise Okay, thank you. Uh, I would have a question, Lynn, basically. I did it backwards as well, quite backwards. So I started with a trance, going to the mediumship and trying to now establish that I'm psychic as well, because I know I am. Yes. So what would be your advice? Because you did it backwards as well. Yeah, I did. I did do it backwards. And I didn't go on any training courses either. I never sat in circle. I didn't go to workshops. I learned by watching. Exactly. I learned by watching other mediums work. And sometimes I learned how not to do things as well as how to do things, um, which is, was, was interesting as part of the journey. But then I realized um, it actually wasn't until a lot of years down the line, I started to go on to courses at the Arthur Finley College. SNUI wasn't around then. 
um, is that I learned about the psychic faculty that um, it actually enhanced what I was already there naturally within me. Um, and so I learned more about how to get more out of um, the experiences that I was having. And to begin with, as I, I kind of, must be about 12 years, I, uh, I've been developing, that I thought, oh, maybe I should do some more of this, reach out to members of the public. So I only offered evidential sittings because I thought, no, the psychic aspect, I'm not quite sure about that. But I've realized over time that it does have value as long as it's done in the right way. So you've got to do what's right for you, Ada. You know, um, if it is your pathway, just focusing on the psychic aspect, that's fine, as long as it's as they done in the right way. If it is, you want to focus on the evidential. But as long as you're honest, one in some ways can sort of go quite nicely along the other. But as mediums, of course, we are here to, to bring that healing from the spirit world. So you've got to decide what it is you want to try and explore really um, with it. Um, and, you know, people do have, if you think about it, if we go back to Victorian times, that people didn't really explore the psychic faculty then, did they? They sat for spirit. They sat for spirit, they sat in their circles, they sat and they spent time in the power you know that so to my mind they didn't have psychic exercises that they had to do they spent the time and the dedication in that very simple way just spending time with spirit um but now we we, we learn all these techniques around it um as well so i would say if if it helps you if it benefits you ada then you know explore both but one will help the other not okay. for the purpose, but understanding the mechanics, if that makes sense. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So I, I get uh, asked every once in a while, like energy wise, what's exactly the difference between working mediumistic or working psychically um, because I do feel and sense a difference but um, I heard some talk about different um, different energy waves or uh, is there an, um, an explanation that um, is more um, uh, I have to find the English word for it I'm sorry no worries, no worries. Um, scientific yeah if you want yeah the, the thing is when we're working with our sensitivity and developing our mediumship we are using we're not using the logical side of our minds so we don't want to move into the realms of thinking okay the vibration of my energy is just at the right rate now it's moving as fast as it needs to be we don't want to be too logical about it no because no just just no. for understanding and how to explain something like that yeah, yeah. better yeah so the, it's about the vibration of energy as, you, as you've realized so i tend to explain it and it's i like things kept very simple for me um that's the way that i teach that's the way that i i like to think as well um, because i think mediumship is made far more complicated than it needs to be um so it is about the vibration of energy. And if you think about it, um, we are, energy can never be destroyed. And the vibration of our energy is slowed because we have a physical body. Yeah, so we are all energy. Yeah. Those in the spirit world are energy. We have a physical body. So that is what slows the rate of the vibration of our energy down. When we leave the physical body, when that stops, we are still energy. So because we haven't got the physical body, the rate of the vibration of our energy speeds up. And so as mediums, we learn through intention and through practice how to speed the rate of the vibration of our energy up. So that's the simplest way that I would explain it to people, Lena. That's a wonderful explanation. Yeah, and, I love and that. It's so simple. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, um, because it, it's true. Yeah, yeah. So it's us learning then how to 
Um, and that's where the, the mechanics come in and the practice comes in about learning to change the rate of the vibration through understanding um, the idea of the power, the aura, uh, and being able to hold that space because that's what we're doing. We're trying to change the rate of the vibration of our energy to make it as similar as possible to those in the spirit world okay. through intention yeah. and being able to hold that space. That's the key to it, isn't it? Holding the space. Yeah. It's not just learning yeah. how to do it, but it's how to be consistent. And if, yeah. if you practice and focus on all of that, then everything else hopefully should be a bonus and progress. But that is the, those are the basics. Those are the, what you need to learn and understand. And so, yes, if somebody was to ask you, you can explain it in a very simple way. It's about energy, the vibration of energy and thought. If you think about it, is that um, energy follows focus. So through setting intention, we're setting focus. So energy follows focus. Thank you so much. So to simply fold it all up for this evening, this day, wherever you are, however this makes sense for you, I just wanna say uh, thank you to all for participating for being present and for assisting spirit world. Also, I uh, wanna give thanks to spirit world for being present with us tonight and for the safety and the support that you've given to one another. Really wanna spend a moment to give some great gratitude and thankfulness to our wonderful guest presenter this evening, this day, Ms. Lynn Parker, for being with us and for expressing your philosophy and your knowledge. And I feel most importantly, your passion and your care for what we do and how we do it. So thank you very much for allowing us to be a part of this with you tonight. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, everybody. And uh, you all enjoy your time wherever you are. You know, as uh, we all do, if you always can check the tuition program for any upcoming courses and classes. If you're not a member, you can also join there as well at snui.org.uk. And until then, may you all be preserved well and may take good care until we all see each other again. Good night. Good day, everyone.